Let's come to some other differences between IFRS and what is there in the Indian camp. Okay? Have you ever recognized? Are you aware that there was something called barter transaction, barter system of trade long time ago? Yes. Right? How do you recognize revenues in case of a barter transaction? What do you mean by barter transaction? Exchanging uh, good for another good. Exchanging goods or another goods. Yes, you can be a little louder. Come on, get some energy. So, a barter transaction is exchanging goods and services, right? So, if you you wanted to buy something, you did not have cash. When there was no cash, you gave whatever you had. You got something that you wanted. Correct. So, let's say between the two of you, if you exchange your phones, okay? You gave your phone to her. She gives your phone to you. She gives her phone to you. Correct. Will there be any revenue? No, sir. Why? Because uh, no economic inflow. There is no economic inflow, right? So let's not say there is no revenue, but then there is no gain or loss that needs to be recognized. So, when we are talking about two phones, they are similar assets, correct? So in case of similar assets, the IFRS says that the carrying amount of asset received is equal to the carrying amount of asset given plus any cash or cash equivalent which is transferred ok so in case of similar assets if there is an exchange of goods the carrying amount of asset received is equal to the carrying amount of asset given plus cash or cash equivalents transferred ok please note that there is no guidance for barter transactions in case of Indian gap ok so when we talk about similar assets Carrying amount of assets received is equal to carrying amount of assets given. Carrying amount of assets given plus cash or cash equivalents. transferred ok please note that no gains or losses are recognized in this case ok but what if there are dissimilar assets in case of dissimilar assets let me make some changes here only the carrying amount of asset received carrying amount of asset received is equal to the fair value of asset received okay plus or minus that is adjusted by any cash or cash equivalents given It's a guidance or it is the rules prescribed under IFRS in case of exchange transactions. Okay? We are not going too deep into it because these are still not very commonly practiced transactions. Okay? It is only specific to some industries. Right? Any questions in this? Please note that in case of NDS, this uh, IFRS principles are same. same. Can I have the board? Yes. Let's move to interest income. Okay. In case of interest income, under the Indian gap, the interest income is recognized on a time proportion basis. Okay. So it's usually time proportion basis. However, under IFRS, 
we remember we've talked about the method. What yeah, method is talked about? Fair value, which leads to a, a particular method. Effective interest rate. Effective interest method. So IFRS talks about effective interest method to be followed for recognizing interest income. Okay. In case of service contracts. The Indian CAP prescribes two methods. Either of the two methods can be followed. Okay? One is completed service contract method or proportionate completion method. That is, it says either you follow that, okay. I will recognize revenues when the service is complete or I will recognize it on a percentage of completion basis. The Indian gap allows either of the two. Okay? However, the IFRS does not allow this. Again, it is the same as the fair value principle of IFRS which says that you should follow the percentage of completion method which is similar to proportionate completion method remember understand if the, if if you are, if you are getting into a service agreement for 3 years the indian gap would allow you to recognize revenues at the end of the third year okay but at the proportional completion method it says in the first year what is the percentage of service which has been complete if it is 20% recognize 20% if it is 40% recognize 40% so this gives a much better picture of the revenues for a business and accordingly IFRS prescribes proportionate completion method which is also known as percentage of completed contract method. Okay? We come to the last part of revenue recognition which is very very important. Okay? <coughs> Can I have this part? Yes sir. Any questions so far? No sir. No? So let's understand something very very uh, interesting. How many of you have ever been to pantaloons? You've been to shopper store? Yes, yes sir. You buy groceries from a departmental store, example Big Bazaar? Yes, yes sir. Right? When you go there they always ask you, sir, ma'am do you have a card? Sir do you have a card? Yes. Do you have a loyalty card? So everyone here would have a Pantaloons loyalty card or a shopper stop loyalty card, right? Now let's understand something. If you are an accountant with Pantaloons, okay, a customer walks in, serves through the apparels, selects two shirts, goes to the store at the counter, gives the shirt, pays the money, takes shirts and goes away. Okay? So you've bought two shirts at the rate of rupees 1000 so the total amount of spending is 2000 and this is the revenue correct yes sir there's no doubt about it it's a simple cash sale right and you have done this every month so the every month there are customers walking in buying shirts t-shirts suits sarees jeans whatever right lots of things they do the same thing and it's a simple revenue but then in this entire process there's one thing that happens shoot what is that there's a loyalty card that you have which is swiped and th th there's nothing else that happens here right they just swipe your card one fine day when you're going there the person at the cash counter tells you ma'am you have 2000 worth of loyalty points available in your card 2000 worth of loyalty points do you want to redeem them let's say those 2000 worth of loyalty points up comes down to 1000 rupees you say wow okay so instead of 2000 i will have to pay only rupees 1000 this time so you pay rupees 1000 only and you redeem rupees 1000 from your card as an 
accountant, how would I account for this? It's a simple transaction which has happened throughout the year. It's happening every day, right? It's the same process that has happened, which which takes place a number of times every day. But then, I did not get one thousand rupees cash this time. Is this a sale for me? Is this a loss for me? Is this an advertising expense? What is it? Discount. It's a discount. It is not a discount. There is no discount scheme going on right now. If instead of you, if he had bought the same item, he would have to pay two thousand rupees. But you are not having to pay two thousand rupees. You are having to pay only one thousand rupees. It is not a discount for you. So is it a loyalty bonus? It's a loyalty bonus. But then how do you account for it? So, uh, for let's say the previous example, the entry that I was passing was cash account debit. Two sales, two thousand. Correct. And I have passed this entry every month for the last ten months. This time, what would be my journal entry? Cash to sales. Cash to sales. But I am getting only one thousand rupees. So, alright. So let's say we have cash account debit, one thousand. What is my sale value? Two thousand. It is still two thousand. Where does the one thousand rupees go? What is it? Provision. It's not a provision because this has been redeemed already, right? The customer is not going to come back and pay that one thousand rupees to me. It is not a provision now. It was a provision. It was a provision. So would there have, should there have been a different entry here? We don't know. The Indian Bank does not provide any guidance on this so far, but every time you walk into a bank, there is a point which is approved, right? So IFRS has got a very typical, very reasonable treatment of what happens to a loyalty point. Okay, and let us understand what happens there. When you walk into the shop, so when you give, the, when they give you a card, they tell you that, ma'am, for every hundred rupees that you shop for, you get ten points. For example, okay, so hundred rupees is equal to ten points. For every ten point, you can redeem seventy paise, or let's say seven rupees is equal to rupees seven for redemption. Do we get this information or not? Yes. Yes. You shop for every hundred rupees, you get ten points. For each point, you can get seventy paise. Or for ten points, you get seven rupees. Correct? This information is available to you, but it is not accounted for. So IFRS says that you need to. This is a, this is an identifiable component of sale, isn't it? Is this not an identifiable component of sale? I know that when I am selling goods worth rupees two thousand rupees, I am entering some points. Which is going to be 200 points this time, right? For this 200 points, I know that I will be getting 140 rupees, right? 10 points is 7 rupees, 200. So 100 point is 70 rupees, so 200 point is 140 rupees. So in this case, I should account for sales as an identifiable, identifiable component. So it is not a sale of 2000 rupees to me, okay? I will have an account. So I have this doesn't talk about what should be the name of the account, but let's say it would be loyalty bonus or something, right? This would be hundred and forty rupees, and the balance portion would be sales. So one eight six zero. Correct me with the math. Yes. Right. This is what is going to be the sale value. Okay. So in this case, you got loyalty bonus points. And this gets accrued every time you are shopping. So today, when you are getting cash of rupees one thousand, the loyalty bonus points will be redeemed. Okay. And please note that this is not one forty versus one thousand. I am saying this would have occurred a number of times. 
this would have occurred a number of times. So I am assuming there were 10 transactions which has happened. Accordingly, it would be redeemed. Okay? This is a very classic uh, way of approaching any particular practical transaction which is covered under the IFRS but is not mentioned in the Indian Gap. Do you have any questions on this at all? Right? 